While admittedly taking a lot longer than I would like it to, we are slowly picking away at some of the more complex systems in our EV Corvette. And to try to stay in the spirit of full transparency, I'm going to explain our BMS solution today. Hopefully you guys have been following along with the Corvette build here. Um, if so, you will have seen the construction of this battery pack already. Inside this battery pack, we are using Volkswagen ID4 modules. We are using eight modules. These are the 12S 2P modules. Um, and what I really wanted to do with this battery management solution is to utilize the factory Volkswagen CMUs. So, complex process, but I'm going to walk you through why we chose to use that method and uh, pros and cons, why we chose that method and how we ended up actually integrating that. So if you're unfamiliar with the ID4 architecture, they use these CMUs at each module. It's a cell monitoring unit. So it's responsible for monitoring all of the series of voltages and temperatures within the pack and then it sends CAN bus signals out to a master. The reason why that's smart, or one of the main reasons why that's smart is that this is contained inside the battery pack. So I'm using two of these large Volkswagen CMUs and each one is responsible for four battery packs and then they are chained together and CAN bus data is fed out of the battery pack. Now, where that's beneficial in, in the most obvious is that for me to get data for all 96 cells out of this requires four wires coming out of the battery. That's 12 volt ground and two CAN bus wires. So four wires distribute out of the battery pack gives me all cell level data for all 96 cells in here, including eight temperature sensors. So each battery each module itself is monitored for temperature and all that is translated into CAN signals and then fed out of the battery pack. Now what I also did was we added a current sensor so there essentially to monitor the the BMS the current sensor and the CMUs is a total of eight wires coming out of this battery that's it. This plug coming out of the battery also has the power also provides connectivity for my contactor. So I have a positive and negative contactor, pre-charge contactor, and everything is now self-contained in the battery. Now the reason why, or one of the reasons I like going that route is because there is no live power coming out of this battery. So when I put the top on this, everything is dead coming out of this battery. The contactors are inside the battery, and until the contactors are energized, there is no power at all coming out of this battery. In my opinion, it's, it's just a smart, safe way of building a battery. Now, a little bit of background on why I decided to go the slightly more difficult route of utilizing these CMUs. So this is the standalone ninth module. This in an original ID4 pack would have had nine modules. And this is the internals of what the CMUs look like. So very distinctly, you can see this is the high voltage connection that would hook up to each module and it feeds into it all 12 of the series connections plus thermistors. So this, I believe there's actually three thermistors inside the battery pack. Then the software averages those and sends out a one module temperature. So that's all this. This side here is all the high voltage side. This is the logic isolated on the low voltage side. And inside here is where all of the bleed resistors are. So the way that it balances the cells is it takes the highest voltage in any of the cells and it very slowly bleeds it down so that all the cells are exactly the same. I'm not gonna get too technical on it. If you wanna look up how a BMS functions. There's probably plenty of YouTube videos out there that will explain it better than I can. But the important thing to note is that through all of my research, the internal wiring for the BMS on the ID4 cells, the trace wires are small enough <clears throat> that they only support about 100 milliamps of discharge current. Now, why that's important is because if we had have gone with our initial plan, which was to wire this to um, something like an Orion BMS, or there's a host of other ones out there. 
every one of those has a slightly different discharge current when it's balancing the battery pack. The Orion, off the top of my head, I believe it's 250 milliamps. It might be software programmable, but I think it's around 250 milliamps. It would probably work fine, but because that is essentially double of the discharge amperage on whatever the small trace wires in there, I thought it prudent for the life of the battery that we try to stick with something that Volkswagen has spent millions of dollars engineering. Um, and they are engineering it with a certain life cycle of the battery. So it is prudent and smart on our side to utilize the technology they've already come up with, then to kind of hack into it with a different BMS system that could possibly shorten the lifespan of that cell if that discharge voltage is too high. Hopefully that all makes sense, but that's our thinking along the lines of trying to utilize as much factory componentry as possible. So again, if we had have used one of those other BMS solutions, we would need to, to take this cell tap wire and we would need to run a large cable out of it to the master BMS, wherever that's located, because there's not enough room in the battery pack. So that would be a trunk of like 96 wires running out to a master BMS so that it could monitor all 96 cells inside this. Where this is brilliant is now, instead of that, I only need four wires coming out because it's all CAN bus data. Now, as far as the master, these are the CMUs and they all talk to a master unit, which is behind me here. And then it parses the data into the screen that I have shown up on the laptop. A couple of things that I will show you is this shows average. So this is averages out my temperature. This shows me the thermistors. This averages out what the temperature of the pack is. But if I go into a detailed view, this will show me individual, all eight modules and the temperature in each module as a variant. So it averages out on the main screen as to an overall pack temperature, but here it over it manages each module independently. So I can tell if one is getting hotter than the other, not just overall battery. So very clever. Um, the other cool thing that it does is this software allows me to run a separate coolant pump based off of battery temperature. So I don't need to run this battery cooling circuit through the rest of the car. I can have its own pump running the circulator for just the battery. And the software will trigger that pump based on temperatures that it sees the modules at, not just an overarching cooling of the entire car, a more targeted approach for cooling the battery alone, which is much more handy when it is charging I don't need to circulate coolant through the entire car. I can just cool the battery pack when we're charging. So the cooling is something that I haven't really discussed very much on this. What I have is the, this is going to be cooled very similar to the way Volkswagen is cooling. It is through conductive cooling through the bottom of each cell. So the bottom cells are mounted to an aluminum plate that's got about three quarters of an inch before the bottom of the, of the tray itself. And this will have cooling loops run underneath the bottom of the battery the exact same way that Volkswagen ran it. So the Volkswagen cells were originally cooled through the bottom and that's the same way that we're going to do it here. The other interesting thing that we did is the way that I've kind of laid this out is I've been able to use some of the Volkswagen components over again. So these little bridges that Volkswagen does make this ties the cells together for the series connections. These, we, I've spaced them so I can reuse these as well. Um, Volkswagen has engineered these. You can see the funny thing in the middle. So if the cell or the module itself expands and contracts, there is room in that for the connection to essentially grow and shrink and not stress the terminals at all. So we're gonna use as much Volkswagen stuff as this because they spent millions of dollars engineering this. It is foolish of me to think that I can do it better than they can do. So again, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible with all the builds that we do here. It is a pretty small community on this electric stuff. So the more all of us can learn together at the same pace, there's no sense in 
in uh, being closed off in fierce competition. There's no corporate espionage going on. The more that we can learn together as a community and grow, you know, the, smart, the smarter the collective gets. So it's, uh, it's kind of our philosophy here is I, I will always be as transparent as possible and share any knowledge that I've gotten with anybody that, uh, that is interested to, to listen to me speak, I guess. Okay, so the next couple of systems we got going on is um, I want to try to get DC fast charging solved. So we got just about a solution worked out for DC fast charging. And the next one is going to be bi-directional charging. So if anybody out there is familiar with bi-directional charging, wants to know kind of where we're at on that, um, leave me a comment. I'm happy to uh, maybe the next video or so we're going to we might be into that bi-directional charging and we'll try to give a good broad overview on what it is, why I think it's, I think it's brilliant to have in the car, um, even if the grid is not quite ready for it yet, why not have it uh, set up so that the car is ready for that. Okay, um, thanks for checking in guys. I will uh, sign off for now, but um, I look forward to seeing you guys again. Thanks.